guys are able to hear us, uh, please do put in the chat uh, if you can hear us loud and clear. You can just use the chat box and just let us know if you are uh, able to hear me. Good evening, uh, Pranjit. Thank you, Praveen. Good evening, Shankar. How are you doing? Long time. A very good evening, Mithun. Very nice to see all of you. Same here, Shankar. We'll start in approximately six minutes from now. Uh, please, guys, uh, get settled in. We'll allow a lot of folks uh, expected to join today. So we'll let, let them give them a chance to join in. Thank you, Jotsna. Good evening to all. Good evening, Sujay. Some known names as well. Good evening, everyone. Shankar, how's the weather been in Bangalore today? It's uh, a great weather. I was in a shoot this morning, a very soft light, and uh, I got some very nice portraits. And um, yeah, it's been good so far. We, we were expecting a lot of rain. I was keeping yesterday drizzle, and uh, I had already fixed up a shoot this morning. And oh. luckily, you know, uh, the weather gods favored us. and. Uh, it was a nice, uh, nice morning, uh, uh, you know, for photography. And uh, yeah, the whole day has been pretty pleasant in Bangalore. Wonderful. So, if I can ask you, uh, were you doing a commercial shoot or a personal shoot? Yeah, it was a portrait for a friend of mine. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. So. Nice. So you still find places in Bangalore to shoot. It's kind of getting more difficult in Bangalore to these days uh, shoot, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So there's a uh, one space space still left, which is Church Street, which is uh, provides you a lot of nice backgrounds and all that. Right, right. And do some nice portraits, uh, especially for um, young folks. There's a lot of nice uh, backgrounds. Right. <clears throat> Church, Church, we, Church Street has been a mecca of uh, photography, isn't it? <laughs> Ever since they made the, the pavement and the, the, right. the colors out there. Right, right. And I think uh, what really happens is the, the golden light uh, is very beautiful there, uh, you know, especially when you can see those tiles and all that. We just need more more spaces like that in Bangalore. Absolutely. So we I need mean. to create more such spaces. Right. So we already have around 25 people joined in. Uh, we'll wait for uh, another five or minutes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome uh, to this uh, webinar on joy of photography. We'll uh, give another five minutes to for everybody to join in, settle in, and uh, then we will start. Thanks for uh, joining on a Saturday uh, evening. I know uh, a lot of you must have had plans, uh, but uh, uh, you have sacrificed all those uh, to hear Shankar, who is already here uh, with us. Okay, uh, in the meanwhile, uh, for the benefit of those who have joined, let me uh, give some uh, tidbits uh, about this uh, webinar and some do's and don'ts uh, so that uh, you are aware. Uh, we uh, we should be starting uh, sharply at 6.30, which is kind of uh, three to four minutes from now, uh, because there is a lot of things to cover. Uh, we plan to end it by eight, uh, uh, but uh, as you know, photography is one topic that uh, you know uh, typically has no boundaries. Uh, so just in case if we need to extend, uh, we would uh, require your uh, uh, presence uh, till the end. Uh, uh, please have your undivided attention as we uh, get to start in next couple of minutes uh, so that you get uh, utmost value of this webinar. Uh, we shall be uh, keeping all the attendees uh, except the host uh, and the co-host uh, into mute so that we can facilitate a smooth session. Uh, there will be a Q&A session, a, a question and answer session towards the end of the webinar, which uh, Shankar uh, personally will, will answer. Uh, so what I would request all of you is uh, you can use the Q&A box, a question and answer box that you see in the Zoom panel uh, to ask questions. So keep the questions flowing. Don't wait till the end. 
keep them flowing. The team will be collating all these questions and uh, Shankar will answer uh, all of them towards the end. So kindly uh, keep keep using the Q&A box. Kindly remember, use the Q&A box. There are, there are two boxes that you see. One is a chat, one is a Q&A. So use the Q&A box so that we can, we don't lose any questions uh, because typically the chat, uh, you know, uh, box will have a lot of flowing comments uh, coming in and it's easy to miss. So kindly use the Q&A box for your questions for Shankar on, on the topic of photography. Uh, rest all, uh, you can definitely use the chat option of Zoom for letting us know any feedback or you want to communicate with anyone of the backend teams here or express uh, any kind of appreciation or anything that you want to share. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, like I said, if there are a lot of questions, we might need to extend, but uh, we are very confident that uh, we'll uh, finish it off by eight. Uh, there would be three polls that will be coming in, uh, which will happen uh, during the course of the webinar. There will be a first poll that will come in as we speak. There'll be another one uh, subsequent to it, and there'll be a last one that will come towards the end. Uh, kindly participate uh, in in large numbers uh, so that uh, our speaker Shankar as well as the backend team understand the demo demographics of the audience today. So please do participate as the polls come in. You will typically get a minute of time uh, to exercise your options. Uh, just to let everybody know, because this is one common question that we get uh, from everybody, there would be no webinar participation certificate that will be provided. So uh, you. Uh, um, just uh, keep a note of that. Uh, there'll be no webinar participation certificate. And just to make it a little more spicy and interesting, um, please stay till the end of this webinar because there is going to be a surprise. Uh, and uh, Shri Kumar uh, from Honeycomb will reveal it towards the end. So definitely would request all of you to stay till the end of the event and uh, not uh, you know log off. You'll otherwise miss it. So please do um, stay with us towards the end. Uh, to to hear the surprise and uh, Shri will uh, definitely let you know. Uh, the recording of this webinar along with the feedback form will be provided to you on your registered email address that you have used for registering. Uh, the feedback form also will be uh, put towards the end for you to exercise so that uh, Shankar and the, the Anikom team, all of us would lo love to know how did we do today. So that's about it. Uh, a warm welcome. Uh, we'll just wait for another uh, minute and then we'll start. Almost uh, 50 to 60 odd people that I can see. Welcome everyone, good evening. A lot of known names. Okay, so let's let's start. Shankar, with your permission, shall we go ahead? Please go ahead. Great, wonderful. So good evening, good afternoon, and even good morning to all of you, Shutterbugs, and everyone who have joined us today from across the world. I know there are a lot of international participants uh, who have joined in uh, joined this uh, live webinar as well. On behalf of Honeycomb Creative Support and Photostop India, a warm welcome to this live webinar on Joy of Photography by our eminent photographer, Rotarian Shankar Subramanim, who is there uh, with us today. Also uh, want to welcome, uh, th this an opportunity to welcome uh, the Thank God It's Saturday, which is called also called as TGIS members, uh, fellow photographers, International Fellowship of uh, Rotarian Photographer members, IFRP, fellow Rotarians uh, around the world who have joined and members of other photography clubs and enthusiasts from India and uh, world outside. A warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for uh, taking a Saturday evening to join us. Uh, would like to start with a quote uh, from Minor White, which uh, which is a uh, quote, photography is a language more universal than words. Now it's a very short and uh, small uh, quote, but I'm sure it is, it is a lot, uh, it has a very lot uh, deep meaning. Because photography, uh, I'm sure uh, everybody would agree, is one uh, genre or one uh, stuff that uh, you will see uh, has no language barrier. Anybody across the world, around the universe uh, can understand as long as you can uh, get in the right uh, uh, emotions uh, out from that. My name is Mithun Prabhu. I am an IT professional and a passionate travel photographer myself. I help Photostop and LiveShots, the brands owned by Honeycomb Creative Support, 
a 14 year old marketing communication agency which is based out of bangalore and having a uh, pan of offices uh, in hyderabad mumbai and pan india we help professional photographers and aspiring photographers hobbies to acquire knowledge in different areas of photography we have been conducting a lot of workshops exhibitions and seminars on photography and non photography uh, topics uh, in various cities a lot of you uh, who who must have been joining us today must have been with us in the journey over the last two years where uh, we have conducted a lot of webinars especially during the core covid period and after that uh, so thank you very much uh, for those of you who have come back and uh, joined us and a warm welcome to all those who have joined us new uh, thank you also for taking your time on saturday evening and attending this webinar in large numbers we had uh, almost uh, more than 1200 people registering and i can see that uh, a lot of uh, folks are still joining in uh, we are absolutely delighted to host you in last two years uh, we have hosted like i said nearly 30 plus webinars 20 plus uh, workshops and master classes from different genres of photography we were absolutely overwhelmed with the love that you had shown and feedback post those uh, sessions that we did so that's why we are delighted to be back uh, with this uh, live webinar uh, with rotarian chandra uh, your feedback uh, naturally helps us to grow stronger and get more relevant content from time to time so at this stage, uh, like I said, at the start of the webinar, we, uh, we will get into the first poll. So if we can just have the first poll uh, flash on the screen. So you'll see a poll on the screen. Uh, kindly exercise uh, your options. Yeah, here is the poll, poll number one. The question is, how many of you here have experience in the field of photography? Just uh, you know, exercise your options. Uh, we have just one minute. Uh, you can be an expert, somewhat have tried in the past, you could be an amateur, never tried before, want to learn more. Do not uh, be, do not feel that, oh, I've never tried before or I'm an amateur, should I exercise? Please do put in your uh, options. Wonderful, I see the responses already coming in. 25 seconds more. So the question is, how many here have experience in the field of photography? Please uh, exercise your options. That's poll number one on your screen. Okay, 10 more seconds before we close. Okay, very interesting mix of uh, folks here, Shankar. Okay, and uh, we just end the poll. Let us share the results. If you can just uh, see on the screen, Shankar, you have yes, yes, uh, yes. a varied, uh, skewed folks uh, today who are joining. And I can see still people joining in, but uh, as of now, okay. Just close this. Uh, okay, so before I hand it over to uh, Rotarian Shankar, uh, I just, um, uh, we just want to uh, talk about Anikom. So over to you, Nafil. Hi, good evening all. Uh, my name is Naufal. Um, I founded Honeycomb about uh, 2008, around 14 years before, uh, during my you know career crisis. That's what I call it as. And I started with two people. Uh, uh, today, uh, I said, and we were doing only an image editing before when I started. And today, we are a complete 360 degree uh, marketing communication agency. So we do graphic design, web design, digital marketing, and uh, you know, fine art printing, this is one of the major vertical. And also uh, we do the uh, creative staffing at the client locations. <clears throat> we work with some of the uh, major clients here in Bangalore called, I mean, um, you know, it's like Infosys, Titan, uh, Puma and Decathlon and Bosch and many, uh, many more from uh, across Bangalore as well as Bombay. And uh, I welcome all of you to this uh, webinar. Uh, we've been uh, engaging our uh, uh, prospects and as well as you know uh, the photography community for that last uh, almost about eleven to twelve years, and a lot of classes, webinars, and you know uh, we used to do it most of the time it's offline, but during that COVID, you know we completely transformed it online training classes center. Maybe Sri Kumar will be able to give you more details at the end of this session. And uh, uh, once again, I'm welcoming and thank you so much for uh, coming on a Saturday evening and spending your time. I'm sure it will be very fruitful for another uh, one hour with uh, the, uh, the brilliant photographer, I will call it Shangar Subramaniam. 
and also i just uh, maybe one minute uh, one show you one video which is show the you know the entire honeycomb services in a capsule format uh, vinay you can please uh, share the video Thank you, thank you, Nofal. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, <coughs> yeah, thank you, Mithin. Uh, Mithin, uh, Mithin uh, over to you, so you can uh, take up. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Nofal, for all of those uh, who want to hear uh, or read about Nofal's uh, inspiring journey. Uh, you know, there is a link that has already been put onto the chat. Uh, I, in fact, on a lighter note, uh, Nofal, I should say that uh, you know the crisis that you mentioned. I hope uh, that crisis comes in everybody's life so that they. run a successful organization like yours thank you nofal thank you okay um, so time for the second poll uh, before we uh, get in um, if we can just get the second poll uh, for those of you who joined us in last uh, maybe couple of minutes uh, uh, this is there is a uh, there is a poll that we'll have yeah here is the poll poll number 2 a uh, very simple question have you ever attended any photography courses or workshops before please uh, do exercise uh, your options Okay. Interesting mix. Initially, it went with all yeses. Now there are a lot of noes. I think it's called going neck to neck. These these polls uh, definitely help us uh, to understand uh, the demographic of the audience today. So thank you very much for exercising. Another thirty seconds before we close. So the question is: Have you ever attended any photography courses or workshops before? There's a yes or a no. right now it's going neck to neck and as as a host uh, shankar is very interesting to see you know how the live statistics move it, it was all uh, yeses and that's noes and now it's uh, mm -hmm. you know just racing against uh, each other okay last 10 seconds before we close the poll for those of you who have not uh, i see around five or six folks who are not uh, exercise if you can just do that as well okay let me just close the poll let me share the results for you shankar so it's 49% yes 53% no so there is a big uh, chance for all those of you who said no to definitely join uh, some classes and uh, you know uh, get inspired uh, by eminent photographers like shankar and everybody else out here who joined us thank you okay let me just close the poll um and i before i introduce shankar i just wanted to let everybody know who have joined us in last uh, maybe 5 or 10 odd minutes uh please stay stay back with us uh, towards uh, till the end of the webinar which is uh, close to 8 pm uh, there is a surprise that uh, shri kumar from anicom will reveal uh, which is definitely going to be very exciting so please do stay yeah. till the end okay so um i don't think uh, Rotarian Shankar requires any introduction for a lot of folks. Uh, he's already uh, a, a, a very eminent uh, personality. But then, for the benefit of those who may not know him, uh, let me just uh, give you a quick, uh, uh, brief introduction about him. So, we want to heartily welcome you, Rotarian Shankar Subramaniam, who is a passionate photographer, storyteller, and traveler, who has been pursuing photography for last uh, two decades. He has been traveling extensively uh, around India and abroad. Uh, Mr. Shankar Subramaniam is has an impeccable knowledge in art and culture, and has been a great source of inspiration for photography. He is a travel photographer at U Shankar Photography. You will see his links on uh, 
uh, social media that will be put into the chat for you guys to follow and look at his work. An entrepreneur by profession, he's a founder of, uh, like I mentioned, TGIS, which is Thank God It's Saturday, a photography club uh, based out of Bangalore, and Nine Dots, which is a corporate training organization that he uh, that he owns. He is also the chairman of IFRP India and vice chairman of IR IFRP Worldwide. Initially, Shankar was inspired by observing nature and was a vivid bird watcher. However, he then moved into portraits and fashion photography, finding the essence of photography in connecting with people instead of just taking pictures. In fact, uh, for those of you who were there from the start of this webinar would have heard uh, Shankar mention that he was in a shoot uh, this morning as well at Church, Church Street in Bangalore. Uh, he has exhibited uh, his pictures in numerous Indian galleries as an avid photographer. Rotarian Shankar Subramaniam is also the MSSI's uh, chairperson and Ragam's India's uh, country head. So a lot of uh, responsibilities that he holds. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shankar, for joining us. It's a pleasure to host you. Over to you, Shankar. Right, thank you, Mithun. Uh, let me just share my screen. All right, uh, a very warm welcome to all of you and thank you, Mithun, uh, for those wonderful uh, kind words that you uh, shared about me. And thank you, Honeycomb, for putting across this wonderful event. We have close to around 84 people already uh, and uh, another around 94 people already in this uh, session. So that's brilliant. I'm hoping that some more people will join us uh, along the way. And uh, yeah, so I just put in a... A message there as to what is a who is an amateur. An amateur is a person who takes part in a sport or an activity for pleasure and not for money as a job. So I was looking at the poll and said that there were some amateurs there and there were some people who were experts. Um, I consider myself an amateur. Uh, I consider someone who does photography not as a profession but as somebody who loves photography and I do it because I love, and I'm not ashamed to say I'm an amateur. I'm proud to say I'm an amateur. So, I, I mean, I would like to tell you that uh, those of you are say, feeling a little bad saying that, oh, I'm an amateur. An amateur means somebody who is, uh, you know, uh, a mediocre or, uh, uh, or a person who is just, um, uh, what do you say, uh, somebody who's just learning. Uh, yeah, so could be, but uh, an amateur is somebody who just loves what they do. So that's who I am. I'm an amateur and I'm not a professional. So while I've done professional work, I do a lot of professional work for some uh, people. That's not my mainstay. I, I'm a corporate trainer by profession and um, I do this because I, I love uh, the art of photography. So uh, uh, what am I going to do today? I'm going to share with you uh, as to why somebody should pursue this uh, hobby a little seriously and maybe a few reasons what uh, I could uh, think of, uh, which I could associate. And uh, I mean, uh, I would also say that photography is good for the health at the end of the day. So I'm gonna prove this by end of the session that photography is good for the health. So those of you who want to know why photography is good for the health, so you can stay back and probably I'll give you an idea why photography is good for the health. So let me, let me start um, with one uh, namaskara and namaste and welcome to all of you through my work. And uh, uh, I'd like to start by sharing that uh, on the screen, uh, I'm holding uh, a friend's Hasselblad camera, and uh, this is not mine. Um, and uh, we, you know, I have a special connection to this Hasselblad camera because when I was a little child uh, and I was in school, my dad brought me a brochure, which had a kingfisher diving into the water and catching a fish and it was a Hasselblad brochure. And that was the image stayed with me for so long and such a powerful image that I wanted to make it make powerful images like that. And for me, that was one thing. And for a large part of my life, I could not afford a camera. And uh, I'm thankful for, you know, uh, the fact that maybe after 30, 30, 35 years, I could actually afford a ca proper camera. And I started shooting in film and then moved on to, um, the digital version. I started from a six, six to eight, six megapixel 
digital camera, which is a Canon 350D. Uh, I've started, uh, you know, from that particular camera onwards. So uh, these are some of my awards that I have, uh, you know, uh, got over a period of time uh, from various international uh, agencies like the International Color Awards, Black and White Spider Awards, uh, the, the Moscow International Photo Awards. Uh, and, and, and the reason I'm sharing this uh, with you is that um, I, I wanted to validate my work. I wanted to see if, uh, you know, at, at an international arena, if, if I'm doing work, you know, which is good enough because, I've, like I said, I don't pursue it professionally. And I love, do it for the love of it. And of course, you get a lot of feedback from people. But when it is pitched against uh, the best of the world, and then somebody is recognizing your work and your name comes up there in the list says, you know, so-and-so USA, so-and-so UK, and Shankar Subramani in India. I feel proud as a, uh, from, a, from a country perspective that I represented India and my, our name was there and there are a lot of photographers. And I've been happy to share that many uh, people have been inspired by me sharing my work and my success that a lot of people have seen me and, and also participated. And I have to thank my mentor, Mr. Anand Sharan, um, who's been uh, you know, a driving force in uh, TGIS and, and me to guide me uh, to, to also show us that uh, these are some of the international uh, arenas where we could participate. So, well, that's another ball game altogether. We can talk more, but I just wanted to share with you that this is, you know, something that I needed to validate myself saying that my work is, 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 is good enough to be awarded in the international forum. So I've also sold pictures, but most of my pictures have been sold for charity. Uh, I have this picture, which I was sold uh, in uh, a Rotary Club in Alaska, and we raised around $400 uh, on just this one image and it went to a, a charitable cause. So, uh, you know, I, I, I feel joyful that, uh, you know, that somebody actually purchased, uh, uh, you know, your, your print. And that's another thing that I see that these days that we share a lot of our work on uh, social media, but we hardly print our images. So I, I think that's another thing that I would like you all to encourage you to do is to try and print your images and see the beauty of your uh, you know, pictures in print. And of course, Honeycomb is there who are doing a great job as far as printing is concerned. And you can definitely check with them. They'll also guide you, they also help you to make these good prints. And this is uh, a picture which I shot in uh, Jaisalmer. And uh, this is a lady who invited us over into our house and uh, you know, wanted us to have lunch with her and she was making hot rotis. And I, just, I, my wife and I was sitting next to her and I was just taking my camera and clicking pictures while she was making her lunch and feeding her children at the end of the day. So I had some great, lovely experiences, uh, you know, doing photography um, in, uh, you know, in the last 20 years. So the question is, why should we pursue, um, you know, the, the art of photography is, is something that I would like to, you know, look, showcase some points and maybe uh, show a proof of uh, you know why one should pursue it a little seriously. Uh, during COVID, uh, maybe two, two and a half years, a lot of people lost momentum and all their uh, cameras are gathering dust and stuff like that. So maybe I can inspire some of you to um, uh, to probably you know get your cameras out and start start shooting once again. And those of you who are already shooting, you know maybe you know up your ante a little bit. So. Let me start with a quote which say that I really believe that there are things that nobody would see if I did not photograph them. And I think that's one of the key aspects of uh, photography is that you, you are able to make these memories. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are going back and, you know, when you go back in time and look at your own pictures and photographs when you were a small young kid uh, or when your parents were young and you, like, you look at it, look at it and say you're this is how your parents were when they were a little boy, when your dad was a little boy or grandfather was a little boy. I'm sure now that there's a much better memory over these years, last 30, 40 years compared to the previous years. And this is how you look when you were in school. And, and what do you have to remember them? And just, just, your, just your photograph. If the photograph was not there, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even remember yourself how you were when you were a kid, you know? So that's how important this photograph is. 
it's 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 a it's a memory tool for uh, all of us. So this this particular picture was shot in Bilbao, Spain, and there's a there's a ceremony which is called the burial of the sardine. And believe me, I wouldn't have believed that there's such a uh, such an event that happens ever if I not really witnessed this. So burial of the sardine, uh, you can Google it up and figure out what it, it happens in many places in Spain. And you can look at why this custom is there and all those things. I don't want to get into the details of it, but there's a picture from that. So, yeah, uh, I don't know if many of you have said, uh, you know, I, we've seen cloud nine. Uh, I'm on cloud nine and stuff like that, but how many of you have seen cloud nine? And actually I saw cloud nine and this is cloud nine. And, um, uh, you know, if I were to tell you that, look, I saw cloud nine, nobody will actually believe. And, you know, here's, this was a picture which I shot in Leh Ladakh and there is cloud nine right here. And uh, it was there just for a few seconds before the cloud disintegrated. And mind you guys, this is not Photoshop. This is not done in Photoshop. This was real. Or you could you could actually do this in Photoshop as well, but uh, this is how it was in real time. So this is Cloud9 for those of you who have not seen Cloud9. So yeah, we would like to record events and memories. And that is one of the primary uh, primary uh, you know role of photography. And uh, uh, you know those of you who are into wildlife photography, this is something that. You know, nowadays wildlife photography is used for conservation. You know, a lot of species are getting extinct. And if you don't really capture these species, you would really not know from years. For example, you know, uh, we have been reintroduced the cheetah in our, uh, 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 in our uh, country. And cheetahs were there uh, all over India and uh, they, they got hunted extensively and they got extinct. And the only pictures that we have are, are old black and white photographs of people uh, you know, sitting uh, on the, uh, standing on the cheetah with a gun. And these are some pictures. The Asiatic lions, which is now present in the Gir forest, uh, was there from Afghanistan onwards, Pakistan, across this entire belt, we could, uh, we could see lions. And they were, those numbers were reduced to almost 70 or 80 lions at one point of time till the, uh, the Nawab of Junagad decided to start protecting it. And today we are fortunate that we have around 550, 550 Asiatic lions in the Sasangir region of uh, Gujarat. And that's the only home for the Asiatic lions. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that we can, we can, we can actually you know, uh, encourage people to record various species um, it's not only just tigers, but but also butterflies, insects, um, birds, uh, flowers, trees, and there's so much. You know, so uh, you know, India is that way blessed with a plethora of uh, uh, you know wildlife and fauna and flora. Uh, that you know, I was just talking to a person who specialized in macro photography. He said you would need three or four lifetimes to document just the macro subjects. That are available in the uh, uh, in the, in in the country itself. So uh, you know this is a, a gray-headed uh, fishing eagle, and uh, this was a, a shot in Badra, and uh, this this eagle was finding it so hard because it has caught a very big fish and it could not lift off itself. So it was just going up and coming down and going up and coming down. And, uh, you know, I happened to, you know, be in the boat at that point of time and this was shot in the boat. So these are, these are things that I can tell you, I can tell stories, I can tell, share these wonderful, uh, you know, experiences with people because I'm able to show this image and show and tell uh, people about what it is. So I also do some children, uh, uh, you know, workshop on uh, awareness of birds in our area. And I use photography to explain to them what are the different birds that are available and I showcase them and, and then we go for a bird walk in near one of the lakes and they're very small kids, you know, very young kids and they're so sharp They because the previous day we were able to show these photographs, they're able to recollect uh, all these birds like this saying that, ah, oh, this is an, you know, um, Asian uh, coil uh, uh, or this is a, you know, rose ring parakeet, you know, there's it's so, this quick and fast that, you know, this is also good for education that you can use uh, photography uh, uh, as, as, as a tool to educate people about what is around us. And, and, and these are things we can do from our home. This, this, this bird was, 
you know, um, a red whiskered uh, bulbul, uh, shot from my terrace. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so beautiful to just uh, observe these birds come and they make a lot, they sing, they're very great singers and you watch them and, you know, you just, you don't need some fancy cameras. You can just use a simple, uh, you know, uh, lens to capture these, uh, some of these, uh, uh, these uh, birds. And these can be shot from your, uh, from, from your terrace. And, and, you know, when, when you want to really see the details, right, uh, that's where you get to study, you know, sometimes when you see these birds, you never get to see them up close like this. And that's, that's the beauty of photography, that you can, you, can, you can zoom up and see every feather and see every detail and, uh, you know, see this wonderful hairstyle this uh, particular uh, uh, bird has. Maybe a lot of us were inspired uh, with our hairstyle with this particular uh, bird. And uh, there are a lot of these common birds, but they make some wonderful pictures. This is a, a common miner, and is there everywhere, almost every uh, you know garden, every tree. You will find these these birds. But again, they make such uh, lovely images. And so those of you who want to take up bird photography, just a tip for you on board of bird photography. This was taken lying full flat on the ground. So. Uh, you know, it's always good to get the, into the subject at the eye level. So don't uh, feel bad to get your dress dirty or you're you know, saying that, oh my God, you know, I'm going, my dress is going to get dirty and all that. All that is, is secondary. You can always wash your dressing, but this moment is not going to come again. And, uh, you know, just look at, look at how beautiful the uh, eyes are and uh, the color combination. And, and this is such a common bird, you know, and you start appreciating uh, these, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, these small little nuances, then life is beautiful. You feel joy. When I talk about you know, joy of photography. What do you mean by joy of photography? You start appreciating the little things in life. And, and you start appreciating the little things in life when you start noticing it. And you start noticing it when you start photographing it. You know? So it's, it's a kind of zen, I feel. You know? It's kind of meditation when you're there with your camera and you're looking for these uh, uh, you know, subjects and you, you come back and you see this image. I've seen this image a hundred times or 200 times, but I, it, 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 it's not a great uh, image. It's not, a, you know, some, something spectacular there, but it, it is, a, it, it is in the, in, for the life of the miner, it's, it's got an insect. It's having its breakfast there and, and, and it's, it's a moment. And this was, it was just again there for a second. And I was there at that time in the right place at the right time. That's that's about photography. You know, you need to be right place, right time. And if you know, if you have your techniques honed, uh, you you have your images, you have your pictures. Uh, some of you may remember this uh, this image. So let me try to you know make it a little interactive because I've been talking for a long time. Uh, how many of you uh, know uh, about this event that happened? Well, significant event in Bangalore. And uh, so those of you who are from Bangalore can probably tell me on chat, you know, what do you think this uh, uh, event uh, uh, represents? Anybody would like to use the chat? And... Yes, so Mithun has already revealed the answer there. It's uh, the um, Hebal flyover. And, uh, you know, they were planning to axe around 550 trees along the line of uh, Hebal. And, uh, you know, there, there were people standing and making a human chain. And this family was there and, you know, I said, hey, uh, you know, how, what do you think about, uh, you know, the tree being cut? And immediately the little boy went and hugged the tree. And, uh, you know, I think his another a friend of his, he also hugged the tree and it was just a moment, and it was such a beautiful moment, you know, the child saying that, hey, I don't want these trees to be cut. And I shared this uh, in the, my own campaign with my social media. I used this image to campaign saying that, you know, let's, let's not cut trees and let's uh, save the environment. So you, you can, you, can uh, you know, uh, you can do a lot with your photography. But it's important to, you know, have the proper technique. For example, this is, a, you know, bird with a backlit and, uh, you know, and, and if you're really, you know, trying to see, okay, how can I focus? Because it's, this is a microsecond. This is an image is a microsecond. Uh, the bird's wings are open. There's a backlight. There's a rim light on the, on the bird. And, and if you see the, the details there, right, you can see the, see the beautiful light on the bird there. You know, the, the wings, 
the light on the wings. So um, it's just there for a moment. And if you don't have your technique right in terms of your aperture, your shutter speed and your focus and whatever it is, uh, it's it's not possible for you. So a lot of times people, you know, try to skip the fundamentals and try and, you know, get into the act of it. So it's very important that, um, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's important that you could... Uh, uh, um, Sanisha, uh, you keep the chat open. If somebody wants to ask a question, all right, uh, they could they could just, uh, you know, I will make it interactive. So it's it's all right if they if the chat is on, you know. So let's let, let it go on. I, I, I don't think it really... Uh, matters it's not hampering me so yeah so thank you so much yeah so so um, uh, yeah so, so guys participate if you want to share something on the, and you want to comment something yeah, so you go ahead and let's let's make it interactive all right so uh, here uh, Mithun of course you can make a list of quick Q and A's and then we can answer that but if there's something that I see and I and I would like to comment I will I will take it up okay yeah so so yeah, so I, th I think it's very important to get your technique right, and that's important. And and then I, I feel that people should shoot a lot. I think they should go out and get your camera out. I mean, the camera and you should have muzzle memory. I mean, you shouldn't go into the field and say, okay, okay, where's my, where's this button, or what do I do, and and how do I, how do I, how do I, you know, um, change my ISO in this camera? I mean, you and your camera should be in 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 line. Uh, uh, line sh sh should be connected with your camera. So, and that means that you have to shoot uh, quite often. So, uh, I I don't, uh, you know, uh, never give up an opportunity to take my camera and go out and shoot. And and I, and I think I've got around, around 10, 15 hard disks of images filled up with, uh, you know, uh, things that that it is it's it's uh, I, I I constantly need uh, more hard disks to store my images because I'm always shooting. So to photograph is to hold one's breath when all faculties converge to capture fleeting reality. It's at that precise moment that mastering an image becomes a great physical and intellectual joy. Is by the famous Henri Cartier Bresson. So. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you see some things which are, you know, not very pleasant, but, uh, but these are, these are, uh, these are, these, these are some wonderful uh, moments in, in the, in, in, in the life of these animals, you know, this is a, this is a pregnant leopard in Masai Mara, and it had uh, caught this uh, impala, but it could not uh, eat, uh, take it up the tree because the leopards normally, they, they take the, uh, you know, Impala up the uh, tree that this one could not, uh, and it had left it hid it hidden it amongst the bushes and went and climbed the tree, right? So, uh, you know, these are some some pictures that that uh, uh, that also tell us what's happening. So normally, I when I go and show these pictures to children, I ask them, do you know what is what is what is this uh, uh, what is this uh, lion doing? Everybody is saying the lion is uh, scratching the tree. No, but actually, this is this is called marking the territory. It it's it's uh, what the male lion does in the morning. It growls, and this growl can be heard for ten kilometers. And there's so much to learn. So I th I think one of the things about uh, photography is that you you observe. And and I wouldn't have been in the forest before my, my photography. I was keen to take a picture of the lion. But as I was wanting to take a picture of the lion, this is in the Gir Forest. What was very intriguing for me is figure out why is the lion growling in the morning and why is it scratching the tree? Or why is it urinating on this tree? You know, so there's a lot of questions and ask around and you learn. So that's a great way to learn, All right? So, you know, so you make these images and, and, and then, you know, you are also able to show it to the world that this is this beautiful animal exists in this, uh, this part of the world. And uh, yeah, so you feel joyful about all this. Okay, so quiz for you, all right. So um, where was this uh, picture taken? All right, so um, most of you are travel photographers, you will know this, know this picture. Yeah, answer is already coming in, Shankar. Yeah, I can see that. So just want to, <clears throat> sorry, uh, just want to remind everybody that uh, any questions for Shankar, uh, respect to photography, please put it onto the Q and A box so that we can collate. Uh, but yeah, I mean these kind of questions, uh, please do answer on the chat. All right. 
Okay, so so we got a lot of people uh, saying Nandgaon and Barsana. Yeah, this is the twin villages of uh, Nandgaon and Barsana where this photograph was taken, and this is the Latmar Holi, and it's it's a, it's it's a it's a wonderful spectacle. You know, if you want to if you want to celebrate Holi, you need to be in Rajasthan, you need to be in UP, Mathura, Rindavan, uh, Nandgaon, Barsana. These are the places, and there really is the Holi spirit. You know, I, I've lived in India for such a long time, and it's the first time that I ever knew that a place like this exists. And, and I, I was, I was completely bowled over by the, by the spirit of the colors and the and the faith and the energy. And this was fantastic. You know, I mean, it's it's a once in a lifetime for me. I wanted to go there again, but you know, I couldn't. I couldn't make it. I'd love to uh, visit this, uh, uh, you know, beautiful scene uh, once again, even though it's a lot of hardship. And uh, you know it's not easy uh, as a as a photographer to to do the shoot. And um, Satyendra has captured a similar picture. Yeah, so he, he knows about it. It's not an easy picture to capture, uh, but it's 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 a wonderful wonderful event uh, for you to see. And it's a recently concluded uh, you know Dasara and uh, you know the Mysore Palace, you know all lit up and everything. And, and really a beautiful joy to see this palace lit up again. So all these things, you know, you 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 want to go to these places, you want to take these pictures. But as you as you uh, you know take take these images, um, uh, you know you 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 capture these images and you see the joy and and you know this dasra is over. But then you come back and look at these memories and say, "Ha, huh, I was there for this thing." And then you have a lot of memories and emotions that come in. Every time you, uh, I call this as emotional metadata, right? So every picture has got metadata, but you have emotional metadata also. So when you see that made picture, so the same emotions, you know, come up. And uh, uh, this is an image that I shot for uh, NGO. And um, uh, I have used this image, uh, the series of images of, for an NGO uh, about, uh, you know, uh, economic development for minority women. And this project was done by an NGO called IFES, and this, this, all these uh, pictures were published in a book called Seher. And uh, this was one of my first, uh, you know, uh, pictures that were uh, published in a book. And I've, uh, my pictures were published in a couple of uh, books after that as well. A good photograph is one that communicates a fact, touches the heart, and leaves the viewer a changed person for having seen it. It's in a word very factor. So this is the Payam, which happens in the, the north uh, of Kerala and uh, the belt of Bangalore and Kook. And uh, you know, I, I can do a presentation, one hour presentation on this Payam event itself. And uh, it's 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 again uh, this this uh, uh, this happens around three a.m. or four a.m. in the morning. And you have to stay awake the whole night for for this for this event to take place, and and you have to be in the right place, and you have to you know you know what's happening. Then you go into the history. That way, you also learn that uh, you know about the country, a lot about our country, the diversity that our country has got. Uh, unfortunately, many of us really do not travel that much, and we know very little about our country. Steve McCurry, who's been traveling to India for since maybe the last forty years or more has told that, you know, he's, he's one of the, you know, people who have captured India left, right and center, it's uh, iconic images. And he says that he has only scratched the surface by getting 5% of what he could actually do. And there's so much we can do. And I, I kind of, you know, I wish I could travel more. I don't have to go anywhere outside the country itself. There's so much one can, um, one can do uh, in, uh, in, within 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 India, right? So uh, Mithun, I think you are there in this image. Uh, uh, you are, uh, I think, uh, on the, uh, I think one, two, three, fourth. Are you in the center? Are you? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you are there in the center. So uh, we've we have been on uh, many tours together with uh, friends, uh, and uh, you know when you travel uh, together and. Um, you know, there's, there's also a lot of camaraderie with people. And I've made so many different friends uh, through through my photography. Uh, I used to lead uh, uh, photo tours with data photography. 
and they do some fantastic tours. I've, uh, you know, Mithun has uh, uh, joined me in one of those tours, I think a couple of tours, and uh, we've had a, a lot of fun. We learned, we, we share, uh, we, we critique each other's images, and we've, we've uh, you know, learned in the process. So I think that's another thing that, you know, you, you could uh, uh, look at, uh, you know, getting to small groups and, you know, traveling and, and maybe, you know, uh, uh, you know, five, six of you can get together and, and make a small group and start traveling. That's it's, it's in some ways, it's also a lot of fun. And you also get to share a lot of expenses of the, you know, transportation, all those things as well. So it's, 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 it's great that you meet such wonderful people. I've met so many friends uh, through my uh, uh, photography that I'm really, really happy that I made such, such wonderful uh, people and wonderful connects over the years. So when people look at my pictures, I want them to feel the way they do when they want to read a line of poem twice. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I feel that you know every picture that I I, I shoot uh, has got, has got something to talk uh, and or maybe a, you know feel like a poem by itself and 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 I like to create such such images as we as we go along. So these are some images that I'm sharing with you. A great photograph is full of expression of what one feels about what is being photographed in the deepest sense and is thereby a true expression of one feels about life in its entirety by the great photographer Ansel Adams. So I'm sure we do a lot of these fun things that we do on the, our tours, we, you know, and, and that's all these things are are, are, are fun. And of course, today, everybody's a photographer. We have our mobile phones and uh, you know, do some, can do some great work with your mobile phones itself. Uh, I uh, taught uh, two kids uh, very recently, a one-on-one -on -one coaching session I did uh, for two kids. Uh, one was, uh, I think, uh, 12 years old. Another one was, was 10 years old. And uh, their mom was so happy that for the last three months, they've been sending me images of what the children have taken. And they have seen, uh, you know, a world of a difference before uh, the instruction and after the instruction that the kids were so quick to grasp this thing. So I think once you learn the fundamentals, it doesn't matter. You know, of course, everything has got its limitations, but you can also do some great work with, uh, with, with mobile phones as well. Photographs open doors into the past, but they also allow a look into the future. So uh, at this point of time, I also like to make an announcement uh, here. This method is a good time for me to make the announcement. Yeah, yeah we can, we can, absolutely. So uh, we have this, uh, uh, this uh, you know, those of you who'd like to participate, uh, have their uh, pictures exhibited in, a, in an exhibition. Uh, we are having uh, one uh, exhibition on the 11th, 12th and 13th of November in uh, Bangalore in Chitrakala Parishad. And this is an aid of the Multiple Sclerosis uh, Society and the funds raised will be, uh, you know, uh, will be uh, given to them. Actually, today is the last day, but as a special, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you say, gesture, I would like to extend this up till Monday night, up till Monday night, we're extending the registration. I request, uh, uh, you know, Honeycomb to please share the link to register. So the way it goes is that uh, there's a 500 rupees registration fee for to participate in this, which is used for the operational expenses. And then once you register, you'll be given a link and you can upload up to 10 images there. And you can also indicate how many images you're willing to contribute. We got, a, uh, we got a sponsorship from Felix Coeller, where we were able to cut the printing cost and framing cost to almost 50%. So each print is, is coming to 1,000 rupees. Now, this is how much you would pay even if you were to go and, uh, you know, you'd pay a little more if you were to go and print it here. So this print will be sold to the public and the money raised will be used to the uh, to uh, provide uh, uh, for the multiple sclerosis society will go into the charity and we've been doing this exhibition jagachitra for the last uh, i think uh, since 2000 i think this is the this is the eighth uh, version uh, here and uh, uh, 
Uh, we have raised uh, every year close to around 7 lakhs of rupees uh, for charity, 5 to 7 lakhs of rupees. So what you need to do is that, uh, let's say that your image was selected, you will have to pay 1,000 rupees to Honeycomb and they will print it and they will ensure that it's framed and sent to the gallery. In the gallery, your print will be exhibited. And now in, the, in case the print is sold, that money will go to the Multiple Sclerosis Society. In case it is not sold, it will come back to you. You can take back the print. So it's a win-win-win proposition. So, um, uh, you know, first of all, uh, you get an opportunity to, uh, to take part. The theme is Indian culture. So when you talk about culture, we talk about uh, temples, festivals, um, clothing, dressing, portraits, um, you know, dances, uh, you know, anything, uh, anything that, that, that depicts the culture of our country. So the theme is culture. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can also uh, connect with Mithun. Uh, he, will, uh, he will, you know, uh, uh, you know, help you understand a little bit more. Unfortunately, we only have a couple of days because we have a very tight time deadline. And the last day to submit the images is 20th of uh, uh, October. Uh, once you are registered, then you have got time up till 20th October to submit images. Only thing you just have to register or the final rupees is the registration fee. And you can submit even uh, four to five images also if you just select it. And each image you have to pay 1000 rupees. You will get a 12 by 18 print. This will be exhibited there. And if it will be sold, if it is sold, then you don't get any image. But if it is not uh, uh, sold, uh, uh, if you can take back the image uh, for yourself. Mithun, have I covered everything or is there anything that I have missed out? No, no, you have covered everything. I think uh, some of the folks are getting uh, registration uh, error, so we'll we'll correct that. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, but please uh, bookmark the the link uh, that is already shared by Shri Kumar in the chat. Uh, plus, um, you know, I would strongly uh, recommend everybody register because it's a Chitrakala Parishad. There's a very very prestigious uh, gallery uh, in Karnataka as well as across India, uh, and. Uh, uh, at least to me, it's a matter of honor and pride if my picture goes there and uh, stays. Uh, and plus, it's for charity. So I think uh, we are doing uh, everything right uh, with this. So please do participate in large numbers. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mithun. So the uh, next thing uh, about uh, photography is that those of you are, you know, I saw that some of you are yet to uh, start this hobby. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hobby which which you can do and there's no age limit and you can you can go on doing photography uh, we've had people who are you know 65 70 who join workshops at at 60 65 to uh, do that of course a little bit of knowledge of the um, uh, the knowledge of uh, uh, photography will be definitely uh, uh, useful in terms of creating these images and also knowledge of computer uh, is always there because today most of the uh, photography happens digitally and uh, uh, therefore a reasonable knowledge of computers and uh, this thing and I'm sure we can all pick up the skill. So uh, whenever your brain is involved in, in something, it, it is, is always sharp for the brain to, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the brain to be constantly involved in thinking and being creative is a, is a great way to keep the brain engaged and for your own mental health and for your brain health, it's a good idea for you to keep learning new things. Photography is one of them, but you can learn new things as well. But photography is a great way because you're constantly, I have 20 years, I think I'm still learning every day. I feel there's, every time I look at uh, the ocean of knowledge available in photography, I think I know, I know so little about photography. All right. I still think there is so much to learn about photography. So you're always constantly learning. So that's an opportunity. And this is one art where you can never say, I have, I'm an expert. So sorry, folks, for those of you who said you're experts, you are experts, definitely I respect you, but even experts have to learn. So when you go to a place like this, you know, sometimes you are, you are, you're perplexed. Where do I stand? How do I take this image? Where do I, how do I compose? So you're always, uh, you're always thinking. There's, a, there's always, there's always something that you're, you're on your feet and you're trying to make those images. Is this the right time for me to make this image? Uh, so it's, 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 it's always um, a thinking game as far as photography is uh, there. Yeah, this is from Humpy, you're right, uh, uh, Soini. Um, 
this is a dance photography. I do a lot of dance photography because I learned uh, Indian classical dance. I learned Bharatanatyam for eight years. So I kind of, you know, really uh, relate with photography, uh, with uh, dance. And uh, when you go to the dance thing, again, there's a lot of uh, thinking to do, you know, anticipation, uh, you know, what is happening here and um, how do I compose? Because the light is constantly changing. They're so dynamic. It's, it's a very dynamic environment. And then you have to constantly think on your feet there, right? So again, some more pictures uh, from Holi. And, and, and mind you, you know, we were 25 of us in this, uh, in this group. And this particular image is one of my most highly sold images. And only two of us in our group got this image because, you know, for some reason, I decided that I don't want to be with the group. I just walk around and, 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 and then kind of look at, anticipate this image. I stood in one place. I didn't know what was happening, but I was just plain lucky, I would say, to get this wonderful image with action. Yeah. So there were only two of us in a group of 30, 30 photographers who were in the same place. Only two of us got an image, which is like this. So you're constantly thinking, you know, what's this exposure? What's this? What's happening here? This is a, a picture which you shot in Hornbill. And all these, this is called a morong. And everybody is uh, standing in the morong during the breaks when they're not performing in the arena. And all of them were facing, uh, you know, inside and they were, you know, they're warming themselves up in the fire and they're not talking. And I just stood there and waited for some time. I was hoping that... Uh, that that something would happen and somebody said I or something like that and they all turned back and it was just a split second I got this beautiful image right otherwise I would have just got their backs uh, in this particular image so uh, this is from the Kumbh Mela this beautiful image I think of photography like therapy. So I, I, I feel that whenever I'm having my camera, it's good for my mental health. I really feel uh, joyful and in bliss. Yeah, so I'm blessed. Uh, here is a nice thinking, again, a thinking photograph. Uh, I, uh, I got an award for this uh, uh, photograph. Uh, it said, uh, the title was, Where Are the Flowers? And it was an environment, uh, to be, uh, you know, section of the photography competition right i told you also that uh, health and fitness is another area that uh, there uh, so why health and fitness because if you really want to go to these you know places first of all you you have to be physically fit you know because you'll have to take your camera you have to take your tripod you know this is a, for those of you uh, who are new uh, to photography this is uh, shot at a slow shutter speed so that you know you can get this milky feel you can see the milky feel to the uh, uh, to the whole waterfall and therefore you need a tripod and it's it may, you need to understand the technique of course but it because it's a slow shutter speed you need to put a tripod so you need to carry the tripod you need to carry your camera well if somebody's there to help you fine but you need to lug all these things so if you're not really physically fit you can't really uh, uh, you know uh, get around to all these places so I think one of the motivation to stay fit for me, you know, is that, oh, if I have to travel, I have to carry my camera, camera, camera bag, tripod, all these equipment. So I have to really be fit. So I need to exercise myself. I need to work. I know we all know that exercise is good for the health, but we need some motivation. I think photography is a great motivation for us to, you know, uh, be healthy and fit. So the world moves fast, changing everything around us with each new day. Photography is a gift that can keep us in a moment forever, blissfully eternal. So this was a, a you know, trip that I did along with uh, Taurus, uh, you know, uh, Captain Suresh Sharma, and we traveled from Kashmir to Leh on an Aisha truck, which was uh, modified as a caravan, and there were eight of us. It was, a, it, was, it was a hard trip because we had to sleep in the tents and uh, we had to travel and, uh, you know, uh, in, in these trucks uh, through these mountainous terrain. But believe me, it was such a fabulous experience. And I would, you know, there's very less oxygen. And if you're going to lay Ladakh in these places, if you're not really fit, you can, you can, have, I've known of people actually dying because uh, they, they were not fit. So, and, and you have to know the, you have to, you have to uh, know the, uh, you know, place, uh, 
uh, follow the rules and regulations. A lot of people there who are who are not new to these mountain areas, they try to go and do a lot of adventure, and then we uh, we've lost a lot of young lives because they are not not really uh, you know, knowing what to do in these in these places. So yeah, so the physical fitness is a key uh, component if you want to trek, if you want to travel, if you want to rough it out in these places because many of these places especially landscape photographers is not easy life at all you'll have to climb mountains climb uh, uh, rough surfaces soft patches and those of you who do night uh, star trails and all of them may have to stay stay up late in the night and it's uh, uh, you know uh, very cold uh, regions so i think physical fitness is uh, something really really important to be able to go and take such images and come back and show it uh, to the world at the end of the day so these are some images from the Leila Dark trip that I did. And I've really, it was a, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, this place, Angkor uh, Wat, uh, Bayon Temple and uh, the Angkor Wat complex in Cambodia. Uh, why I'm sharing this again in the health and fitness is that it is such a humid place that, you know, you just walk for just say, uh, maybe just one kilometer and you're, drenched in sweat it is so hot and so humid and it's so tiring and you're so fatigued by the end of the day and you know so so you'll have to be really really uh, fit to uh, walk around with your camera um, carry your lug your camera walk in the heat and and go to these places because everywhere you need to walk 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 and you, you can't you can't uh, really have uh, the luxury of going everywhere in a vehicle so these are some uh, images. And this this temple is very famous uh, after uh, Angelina Jolie's uh, uh, Tomb Raider movie came and popularized this particular place. So this is uh, pictures from Cambodia. Of course, there's a, a lot of creativity that uh, you could uh, you know do with uh, you could you could you could work with your uh, images. Um, if it's a so portraiture, um, fashion work, um, the, so so with 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 with, with each uh, image as you see, you can you know you are constantly thinking. Those of you who've done studio work, you probably uh, know what I'm talking about. Is that is that you're constantly thinking um, uh, about uh, you know uh, what to light, how to light. Uh, what's the makeup? Uh, you know, you're working with a team of people. You're working, you're working with a makeup artist. You're working with uh, the fashion designer. You're working with a model. Uh, you're working on the pose. You're working. Uh, you know, so so every time I'm I'm in the studio doing these uh, studio pictures, it's it's the mind is constantly thinking. The mind is you know working, uh, saying that you know what is the what is what what how should I like this. What should I do? What should be the next image? How can I make a different different image? Oh, what's the kind of creativity that I can bring in? How can I, um, uh, you know, how can I uh, create a, a magical image uh, for this person so that they could use it for whatever purposes they have? So yeah, well, learning the technique is fine, but once you learn the techniques, you also need to uh, see how do I how do I play around? How do I process my images? Uh, how do I get that arty feel uh, to the images? A great photograph is one that fully expresses what one feels in the deepest sense about what is being photographed. The art of photography is all about directing the attention of the viewer to what is there. Now you look at this uh, in, in this image. It, if you really see this, would this is not how you see the naked eye. It'll be it'll be there among a lot of flowers in the garden and. What you do as a photograph is that you bring the viewer to that particular part that was really exciting to you, right? So that's what you do. It could be a simple, uh, simple leaf, a dried leaf like this, and and you see beauty in in that. All right. So those of you who like flowers and floral pictures, yeah, there's always something to do in your garden, so you don't have to go very far. But if you gain know how to how to shoot images, also you can make some really creative images. This is a coloring pipe too, from Kerala. So 
some macro work. So this is from an uh, island called Majuli in Assam. <laughs> this is a, a, a image of a dancer getting ready. And I was trying to take a picture, but what happened was behind, there was a, a young boy dressed up in the Yakshagana dress, and he was looking through the mirror as well. And I thought this, this made a very nice image. And this just happened, this, this whole, whole creativity and the contrast that came in it was just, just beautiful. It's a very popular image of mine. Yeah, so I also do sometimes uh, weddings for friends of mine. And uh, again, the wedding is a great opportunity to try and uh, do a lot of creative images and to, you know, uh, bring in your creativity and thinking and saying that how can I take these images and show the uh, show the moment in a, in a very sensitive way, right? And how do I capture these little moments where I can bring in emotion and show this, show the delicate emotions there, right? This is an Yakshagana artist getting ready. There's a very famous Yakshagana artist by the name of Shivanand Hegde. All right. So this is a very nice image of mine. This is, a, this is what I do. Travel photography is my genre of work that I do. And it's a very ironic uh, picture here. Uh, okay, so it's just a small time to interact as well. What, what do you see is the irony in this image? What, what do you see is the irony in this image? Use the chat to let me know. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So yeah, so that's that's where photography is going because I think mobile photography is taking over, and <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, this boy is basically making a living taking photographs of people who come and come to this the Pushkar Mela, and people come and wear these dresses and take images, and these people used to sell these photographs and make money, uh, and at this. One end, you know, you see a lot of joy in the uh, in the uh, you know selfies, uh, but you see a lot of disappointment in that boy there. Yeah, so yeah, so that's some of my travel pictures. This is from Scotland. Uh, a beautiful uh, evening. One thing about shooting uh, in UK and Scotland is that we go in the summers. Uh, you can shoot right up to 7, 8 p.m. and, uh, you know, the sun sets pretty late and you've got a large window of time to do photography. My life, life is shaped by urgent need to wander and observe and my camera is my passport by the famous Steve McCurry. This is again from the Pushkar Mela. So you can see a lot of my work in uh, this place called Ushankar.in and... Uh, uh, this is again one of my highly awarded uh, pictures and highly sold images. There's one hanging in Nofil's, uh, uh, you know, in the in his office, and I think Sri Kumar can say that this this is I think uh, sold the maximum number of images in uh, along with my holy picture, uh, which has been sold. Yes, and, and this particular image, you know, I took around four to five days to really figure out. Um, uh, where the camels are coming from and there's the dust which is being raised and there's the sun is the opposite side and I went back four years later to try and you know make the same image but unfortunately development has happened and the road, camels are now coming by road and this picture is now worth a lot more because you cannot get this image in Pushkar now because the camels are now coming by road and there's no dust and there's no trauma and all that is gone not in this place, maybe somebody somewhere else you need to find where they're coming through the sand and try to pick, uh, take this picture. So actually this has got a nice story because for three to four uh, days, I was trying to wander around to figure out where these camels are coming from. 
but I was getting distracted on the way because I would find some nice portraits and take these portraits. And by the time I go, it would already be 7 a.m. And even though I start at 5 a.m., by 7 a.m., this all the drama is over. So on the fourth day, I decided I'm going to just be blind. I'm not going to go here or there. I'm just going to walk towards the spot. And I was there at 6 a.m. And the camels who are, the camels are taken out for grazing around 3 a.m. And the camel herders bring them back around 6.30, between 6.30 and 7. And if you're not there during that time, you will miss this particular shot. And uh, this is one of my, you know, uh, really, really, you know, amazing uh, experiences. And, and I, and I, I whomever I have shown this image, uh, I, one of my, the, this image was shown at an auction for Rotary for 30,000 rupees. Yeah, so... Uh, I'm very, very happy that uh, that person saw value in this particular image. Right, uh, Mithun, so we are in the 740 uh, thing and I've been uh, meandering around and talking uh, nonstop for quite some time or most an hour. So is it time that we take up some Q&A and, and have an interactive experience and maybe I can stop my monologue? Yeah, so I think, uh, Shankar, let's uh, maybe another two, three minutes uh, if you can just wrap up and then... Uh... Uh, we will have an, we have around 22 questions, so I will take up all the questions. Uh, don't worry, folks. So please, please put in your questions into the Q&A box. Questions. All right. Okay. Yeah, so don't so worry. Let me just share some of the uh, images uh, there, you know, uh, some, more, some more images. Yeah. I don't know if you're able to see this, uh, the beauty of these things, but I'll tell you the beauty of this is when you make a honeycomb print and a big, large print, right? That's when you see the beauty of this, uh, the, these images. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, Honeycomb is one of the printers, but if you are not able to reach Honeycomb, wherever you are, if you're able to, uh, you know, go to this thing and, you know, printing again is another art, the different types of paper, the different types of uh, inks, the different types of printing and some, some people, you know, they try to uh, go to the cheapest print available and you don't really get the gamut of colors that uh, uh, like a, a printer, like an Epson printer that Honeycomb uses, you know, they use around, uh, I think, nine to ten colors. And, uh, ten nine colors. colors. Is it nine colors or ten colors? It is nine. So, nine, nine colors. So uh, the, the different uh, different shades come out very clearly when uh, when the when the printer is able to render that that uh, uh, that that quality and the kind of paper that you choose. And uh, this is uh, acid-free paper, and you don't. It doesn't get dull even, uh, you know, I've got some of the prints which have, I printed 10 years ago and they have not yet faded, uh, uh, you know. So uh, I, th I think uh, I think printing really plays a huge role and I think the joy of printing the images is, is really fabulous. So I, I think, you know, you should, you guys, you know, I mean, don't say, don't think that I'm promoting Arikom. You can print wherever you want, but uh, Arikom does a good job, but do print and do print it on, take, you know, over the next week at least, you should go and take your images and go to a nice printer and get your um, pictures printed and see them in print. You'll really enjoy it. And when these images are, you know, just blown up and seen these in prints, they're, you know, they, they just they just look, I, mean, I can just keep looking at them, you know. Yeah, seeing them on screen is fine, but seeing them as print is totally, totally different. So these are some uh, some images from Tayam. This is from uh, this this image is from uh, uh, the Arunpur Sahib, Holla Mola. Anjum. So I'm letting the pictures do some talking for some time. So I'm just. Uh, uh, if you have a question on the on the picture I'm showing, you can just uh, ask me. This is in uh, Varanasi. Mysore doing Dasara. Kashmir. Uh, Greece. I wish that all of nature's magnificence, the emotion of the land, the living energy of place could be photographed. Greece again. Santorini. Greece. 
if you want to be a better photographer, stand in front of more interesting stuff. Jim Richardson. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I'll, I'll, I'll close it here. So I'll just wind up by saying that uh, travel photography is about knowing where to go, you know, what to shoot, where to stand, and when to shoot. So these are the four questions I always tell about travel photography. And, but, you know, figuring this out is itself a lot of research, right? So over to you, um, Mithu. Sure. And I think I will want to add, uh, Shankar, two, two more things. One is uh, play of light, uh, which plays a very important role. And uh, what you rightly said, uh, print them. Uh, that, that's, that's definitely uh, the joy of photography, uh, to sum it up. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Shankar, uh, for your valuable time. I'm uh, looking at the questions that have come in, looking at the comments that were flowing. I know you were busy <coughs> talking. Uh, I think you should uh, grab some water. We've been speaking nonstop. Uh, but uh, essentially, uh, uh, I, I, I being a travel photographer, having traveled with Shankar uh, multiple times in the past uh, uh, as well, uh, one thing I would definitely want to tell you is that whichever genre of photography that you choose, uh, the joy of photography has to be there. That should be your DNA. That should be your passion uh, because that helps uh, not only uh, bring the uh, enthusiasm in you, but uh, like he rightly said, you know, even documenting and sometimes even uh, assisting, uh, you know, the world over with respect to problems, with respect to stuff that's uh, probably happening. So I think uh, uh, it is res uh, responsible journalism as well. Uh, if, if Shankar, if you want to uh, put it, uh, sum it up, uh, not just photography. Uh, and I, I was uh, going through some of the comments uh, on the picture that you showed uh, where there was this boy and the family. Uh, I saw some interesting answers. Uh, you guys were absolutely right. Uh, you know, it is uh, uh, somebody's livelihood being snatched. Uh, some had uh, emotions as an answer. Absolutely right. I mean, two different emotions and uh, some... Uh, even talking about, uh, you know, the stark contrast uh, that it shows. Uh, but I think the most uh, interesting answer that I found was, uh, Shankar, uh, somebody said, everyone is a photographer, <laughs> which is which is absolutely right. You know, so, uh, today with the, uh, with the smartphone in the hand, everybody thinks they are photographers. But yeah, I mean, that's fine. Everybody have the reasons. But I think uh, uh, using the camera, using uh, mobile phone doesn't matter. What matters is what you document and what you put across. Thank you very much, uh, Shankar, for your time. Uh, before uh, we go ahead, uh, if we can just have the third poll. Uh, like I said, uh, we will have a poll, quick poll, and then uh, we'll get in. So thank you very much. Uh, so please, uh, folks, uh, poll number three, do you print your photographs at all? That's the question that uh, Shankar also asked, uh, but let's uh, uh, have you participate. Great. Uh, so the answers could be, yes, I do print. No, I don't print. I don't intend to print. And some uh, want to know more. So so it's perfectly fine if you don't intend to print. Uh, I'm sure looking at this presentation and uh, taking pictures and uh, giving Honeycomb an opportunity to print for you, your possibly your uh, options might change at a later point in time. Uh, and for those of you who do not print, uh, there's a big opportunity. Like I said, at the start of the webinar, please stay uh, till the end. Uh, Shri Kumar, who is just coming right after this, uh, will reveal the surprise for you. For those who do not print or those who intend to print. Uh, a lot of questions had come in, so don't worry. Um, there is uh, uh, numbers that will be flashed off Shri Kumar where you can reach. Hanikom. Okay, five more seconds before I close the poll. If... Uh, uh, rest of you who have not exercised the votes, uh, can you please do that? The question is, do you print your photographs at all? Just select one of the answers. Okay, let me just close the poll and uh, share the results. Uh, so Shri, uh, if you can, um, and Nofil, if you can see um, very interesting answers again, skewed through. Uh, there are a lot of folks who do not print and there are a lot of folks who print as well. So I think... Uh, great opportunity for everybody to, to print and I myself uh, print at uh, Honeycomb all these years uh, more than a decade now and I think uh, you know the the canvas to papers to everything is is so so colorful okay over to you Sri. thank you Mithun hello everyone I'm Sri Kumar here and would like to thank everyone for joining us today 
I would like to extend my gratitude to Rotarian Shankar Subramanian for conducting a fantastic webinar today. It was indeed an eye-opener session on how one should perceive photography. In fact, your style of delivering and sharing knowledge has been of utmost value to each one of us who are here today. Thank you once again. On behalf of Shankar sir and the entire team of Honeycomb, we would like to take this opportunity to thank each one of you for investing your valuable time on a Saturday evening to be part of this webinar. Hope you had good take uh, aways from this webinar. Now I'd like to request a few more minutes of your time to talk about uh, Photostop, the fine art uh, print division of Honeycomb. Uh, we provide uh, Gigli printing or archival printing services for photographers, artists, interior designers, and architects. We use uh, acid-free canvases and archival papers for the same using uh, 11 color archival printers. Uh, as uh, Honeycomb is uh, completing its 15th successful years, we are offering a 15% discount on all fine art prints of A3 size and above, that's 12 by 18 and above. And this offer is valid till 31st of October, 2022. You can contact me on uh, 9901273816 or uh, srikumar at honeycombindia.net. The same uh, will be mentioned in the chat as well. Uh, thank you all and over to you, Mithun, for the uh, Q&A section. Thank you, Shri. Uh, so I think uh, the, the surprise is already revealed. So you get a 15% discount. I think you should, uh, all of you should grab it. Uh, and uh, some of you had some questions on what's the minimum size to print? Uh, shall I use this picture or that picture? Don't worry about it. Just reach out to Shri Kumar uh, and his team. They will consult you. They will give you every kind of guidance. So you will get uh, the best thing uh, printed and delivered to your doorstep. So absolutely uh, reach out the numbers are already patched uh, his mobile number and the promo code as well as his email address everything is shared on the chat please use that for your benefit okay so over to questions uh, shankar let me just uh, start picking up the questions there are a lot of them so in the interest of time uh, folks uh, we might have to extend by maybe 5 to 10 minutes uh, because we want to ensure that we answer all the questions uh, uh, so shankar we can keep it brief but i think uh, we should answer all and uh, Shankar has already shared his mobile number. Uh, uh, I have given my contacts as well. So you can reach out to any one of us or Shri Kumar. And uh, if uh, post this, if you have any more questions, guidance, we are more than happy to help because that's that's why we are here. Okay. So, so Shankar, uh, the first question from Surya. Um, the question is, uh, what are the important criteria to be taken while doing portrait photography? Well, for that, we need to run a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, it all depends on uh, you know whether uh, you are doing a, you know available light photography or you want to do a studio photography. Uh, knowledge of light, I think, is 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 the key here, and how light uh, falls on the subject, where is the light coming from, what is the light doing to the subject. Uh, so let me just give you a simple example here. Let's say that if I want to take uh, Mithun's uh, uh, photograph and I want to do a portrait of Mithun, one thing that all the People who say, you know, that when they come to the photographer is, please make me look good, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, however, you know that uh, you know if you are thin or you know you're you want to look a little more uh, larger because you look you want to look a little bigger. So, the thin people want to look a little bigger, a little a little bit rounder. Uh, people who are a little larger, they want to look a little thinner. So, so they want to they want to show what they, their best side in the, in the photograph, right? They want to hide their flaws. So one of the things that you have to know is that, you know, if, if somebody who's got a perfect face and a perfect, uh, let's say, uh, a body structure and uh, everything is, is perfect, uh, you really don't have much of a hassle there because, you know, you can pose at them any time. But if you really want to, uh, you know, pose somebody who uh, wants to, uh, hide some flaw of theirs, you know, which they think is a flaw, right? Uh, and uh, uh, then, then that requires a lot of, uh, you know, your knowledge of photography and lighting, and how, in which, which, which angle you're going to be shooting, how are you going to make them? So there's posing, there is, there's lighting, there is uh, uh, the photography techniques. All these things there is comes into play. So I, I think we'll have to run a, you know, complete workshop on portraiture. 
if you really want to make some nice images. So if you've not done a workshop already, I'd encourage you to uh, do a workshop on uh, portrait photography. Absolutely. Thanks, uh, Shankar. So there's a question from Manish uh, on uh, any kind of tips for a razor uh, sharp picture and focus. Yeah, so one thing is that, uh, you know, uh, why do you say, I would I would answer it in another way. Why do you get blur, blur images, right? So why do you get blur images? Is one is that there's a camera shake uh, or it was a low shutter speed, right? So one of the things that you could uh, look at is to see how do you keep your, your, your camera stable and how you're holding the camera. You know, a lot of, I see a lot of people holding the camera like this and, and it's your real bows are uh, far away from your body. And, you know, just a simple thing of, you know, just holding your, um, you know, elbows closer to your body. It just, it, and you're resting your camera here and you're shooting, you know, you are, you are getting that much support that it itself will stop the camera shake. And of course, if you watch your shutter speed, right, that's, that's one thing. And the second one is that, you know, where are you, where are you focusing? Uh, and what kind of focusing are you using? Uh, center focusing, are you using uh, uh, multiple, uh, uh, you know, spots focusing? So what kind of focusing are, are you using? So all these things uh, uh, play. So for example, if you're having a moving object uh, and you're focusing, how would you be focusing? So um, you, you need to look at all these different aspects to be making sure that you get a sharp image. So one is that you have to choose your shooting mode, your focusing uh, uh, mode, uh, and you have to show whether it's a continuous fo focus or one shot, uh, what is it, our AI uh, continuous focus? So what is the focusing mode you're going to be uh, using? And uh, what shutter speed are you using? And how stable are your hands? So you're going to use a tripod? Are you going to use your body to support it? Are you going to lean against a tree and then, or a building to support yourself? These are all things that you could ensure to see that you get a sharp image. And of course, some of the lenses uh, give you more sharp Im images. Uh, again, up aperture, what aperture you're shooting and where you're focusing that also. For example, if you want everything sharp in terms of uh, the, you want a greater depth of field, uh, you want an F8, F11, uh, F14 uh, depth of field. Uh, if you want uh, shallower depth of field, you want F2.8, F4. Then again, uh, when you use a shallower depth of field, if you focus on the eye, the ear can go out of focus. So you need to know where to again focus there. Right. Uh, there's a question from Tushar uh, on uh, photography means as it uh, as as it is a photograph or is it also include editing? Do you do editing as well? Obviously, even uh, people who were shooting in the uh, monochrome uh, black and white film days, they did editing. And uh, whatever we're doing in Photoshop these days are an element of what used to be happening or replicating what happens in the dark room. So we're not doing anything. There was burning, there was dodging, there was uh, uh, controlling the exposure. These are all things that we do. But then again, it depends what kind of uh, you know photograph you're doing. For example, there there is a there is a element of composite images. People do composite images. For example, today if you see advertising advertisement photography, it's always composite images. There's no there's no one image there. There's photography is maybe 30, 40 percent. There's a lot of editing which happens. Uh, so advertising photography is a lot of, uh, you know, putting different elements together. So I think we need to know what is it that, for example, if you're, if you're shooting, uh, you're doing photojournalism, right? And then you're trying to tamper with the image, you're trying to crop, you're going to remove some component there, then that is not really ethically correct. If you're doing nature photography, and you're trying to tamper with things in the, in the, in the image there, that's not depicting what it is, right? So it all depends. On the, I think your question is more about the ethics of uh, of editing, and there I think you it, it depends on what is the image at the end of the day. What is the context in which we are discussing here? So if you're doing some 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 uh, for example portrait work, and then somebody has a scar or somebody has you know blemishes on the skin, it's a natural process that we use uh, the healing brush and uh, a skin smoothing to smoothen the skin. It's a, it's 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 a given in fashion photography. There's no, there's no fashion photography. 50% of the photography happens uh, in the camera and 50% happens on the editing table. So uh, it depends on what kind of, uh, uh, you know, 
photographs that we are we are shooting and what is the editing doing and what is it that we're trying to do if you're trying to fool the people then then obviously what is it that you're trying to fool the people right okay right I think uh, there are, uh, I, I will probably want to consolidate uh, these questions because there are a lot of questions, uh, Shankar, on uh, should we use mirrorless or DSLR? Is DSLR market getting killed by the mirrorless? So I think uh, if you can answer them in one shot. So I have this thing. So if you're going to buy a new camera and you don't have a DSLR already, right, and you have a big budget, then uh, yeah, you can go straight away for a mirrorless because most of the camera companies are, are going to stop manufacturing. I heard they're going to stop manufacturing DSLRs. If you already have a DSLR, I would still like uh, you know encourage you to explore the uh, potential of the DSLR because another three, four years, five years, I think as long as you can get spares, you can still keep doing it. I, I have still not shifted to mirrorless, so I'm very happy with my full frame uh, DSLRs that I use. And I think you, I encourage you to, uh, you know, continue to use uh, whatever you're using. It's, it's, I always say, it's not the camera, it's the person behind the camera. So I would, I would say that that's, that's an important thing. Having said this, if you have a, a good, uh, what do you say, uh, a good, uh, what do you say, uh, equipment, uh, uh, reasonably good equipment, you will, uh, which, is, which is suitable for that. You, you can also get great images from a, uh, Entry level cameras as well. But if you're doing special, for example, if you're doing a lot of low light photography, then you will need a, 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 a full frame camera to, uh, to be able to do that uh, low light images uh, at the end of the day. So, yeah, so that's, that's what I would suggest is that uh, you try to exploit what you have. Don't be on the uh, uh, gear acquisition drive, you know, a lot of people buy a lot of uh, gear and because somebody keeps gear guiding them, hey, you know, Nikon is better than Canon and Canon is better than Sony, Sony is better than Nikon, you know, so everybody gives you on this thing and then you just, you just hope that another better equipment will make better uh, images, no, it's, it's a better technique, better uh, fundamentals, uh, more travel, more shooting, more understanding of photography is going to give you more better images at the end of the day. Right. Uh, I think uh, uh, there, there, was a, there was a question from Steve. Uh, he wanted me to specifically take this up with you, Shankar. Uh, so he said that uh, he used to do photography as a side hustle sometime back. And then he had, uh, unfortunately, a heart surgery in 2020. Then he could not continue. And now that he's recovered, he wanted to start his career back as a travel photographer like you and uh, wants to work with uh, leading travel magazines. Uh, he, he, he does write but he doesn't know how to write professionally for his work. He wants to know where to start, what kind of skills are required if you can write. So I think it's very important that you start with uh, with a blog, with Insta, with Facebook, with social media, and uh, and and then uh, try to you know tag all these uh, uh, the travel magazines and uh, grab their attention, and also keep writing to these uh, travel magazines to the editor. And when you write, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, you can also, uh, if you are, if you're not really, uh, uh, you know, adept at writing, you can always uh, speak to somebody who's good at writing and uh, ask ask them to help you to put the writing in place and then create a set of images and uh, write to these travel magazines. And uh, they're quite encouraging. So they very, very soon if they see some great work, they're very encouraging and you can, can write to them. So. There are these uh, airlines uh, which will feature, so you can write to all these airlines from their uh, tra travel, uh, you know, the airlines magazines they like to feature. Uh, and you can write internationally as well. So um, you can get these email IDs and uh, the editor's details on the web. And you just need to keep, uh, you know, writing to these people. And I'm sure, you know, they, they will be, you will find some success uh, getting to these people. Right, and uh, I just want to add Steve uh, here as well because uh, what Shankar said was absolutely right that uh, please do Instagram, use Instagram specifically, do tag, uh, uh, you know, you try, try, try like they used to tell us in the school uh, until you succeed. So you definitely find success. Uh, I want to uh, just take a few seconds to explain my personal experience. So in last uh, one week itself, uh, I got, uh, you know, featured uh, with uh, Maggie India, uh, you know, the I'd put my picture of the Maggie 
uh, being eaten in the mountains uh, and uh, book my show, uh, which took my uh, Hyderabad uh, Chamina picture. So, you know, I was pleasantly surprised. I did not put anything apart from tagging and it, it just clicked. So I think uh, that's, that's what uh, you should do. Uh, try to uh, take pictures, uh, you know, showcase the culture, city, food, whatever you want. And then I think uh, it will all work for you. Okay, hope that hope that answers for you, uh, Steve. Um, there's a question uh, which normally is the is the scary part for any photographer, Shankar, which is the backup uh, of photos. So there is a question from Rajneesh uh, that he works for an NGO. He does a lot of activities to capture photography of all activities, and uh, he backs up all the selected photo for his documentation. Uh, he's confused on the backup of photos for long use, and uh, what what kind of uh, solution would you recommend for long term backup? Sorry, sorry, I didn't get, I, I didn't get that. I didn't get that part. The Last long term, time. long term solution for uh, backups. Oh, I see. This is a technical, technical question in terms of a backup of uh, images and all that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the, I, I think Dr. Krishnamon has uh, shared a, a video link on YouTube. I think Mithun, maybe if you uh, can uh, share it with this uh, person. Sure, I sure. Think, I don't know, one hour session on. Uh, uh, backups and uh, so I think it was what is it two plus one or three plus one three plus one uh, three plus one is the formula I think that's what Dr. Krishna Mohan uh, well, had uh, talked right. about so Rajneesh uh, uh, just to uh, keep it short uh, uh, you can get in touch with me I, I will uh, let you know uh, the link but uh, uh, in short uh, you know whatever works for you uh, you know considering whatever uh, hard disks you have backups you have at least uh, two backups uh, for sure uh, in different places, uh, maybe on one on the cloud, one on the physical. So it all depends. Uh, but please use, uh, you know, because that's a dreaded question that most of the photographers have. What if I lose my memory card? What if I lose my camera? What if I, Shankar has experienced it once before of losing the entire Canon gear? So <laughs> he, he can he can be the best uh, person to answer this. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there is somebody who had asked a similar question on the mirrorless versus uh, this thing, but then that uh, Tejas uh, did say that he does. Automotive photography, which is very good. Uh, I think uh, he wanted to know which one we should select. I think the answer is the same. Whatever works for you. Uh, I think the most important thing, Tejas, is not to invest heavily into anything because photography, although it's a good, great passion, but it's also expensive. So you should uh, look at and various also, options. I mean, I really encourage everybody to also, you know, try out uh, gear by hiring them out and renting uh, it out, renting it out, and uh, hiring it out, and. Uh, and uh, uh, sorry, renting it out and then use it. And then if you like it and you see the quality of images, you're happy with it, you can go for it. Because today there are a lot of these uh, company, uh, camera rental companies, which are providing you uh, cameras and lenses. So instead of really, you know, buying, let's say five lakhs worth of equipment and then keeping it in your house for two years. And then later on, we want to sell them, they're worth two lakh rupees. So uh, you lost three lakh rupees and you've not even made uh, 10,000 rupees on your image. Right, so you might as well pay a thousand rupees or two thousand rupees a camera and hire it out, and and if you're going to make money, you know, the, you can write it off as expenses. So I'd encourage you to do that. Right, um, folks. I know that we are already over the time, five minutes, but I will just take another five more minutes so that we answer uh, as many questions we can. Just in case if we are not able to answer a few questions, we'll definitely get back to you, or you can get in touch with us. Uh, we'll have Shankar also respond to you, so don't worry about it. Uh, most of the questions, uh, some of the questions are related to mirrorless versus this. So we have already answered that. I'm not going to take that. Uh, I think there was one question, Shankar, that I had seen on your bird image uh, that you had shown. Uh, how did you get the light behind the feathers? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't put the light. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sh 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 Shivani had asked this question. It was a late, late sunset uh, uh, picture and uh, there was a lot of activity happening. I could see uh, I think there was a, some lake cleaning happening and there was, the water was being drained down. So the fishes were all there and there was a lot of bird activity there. And uh, I was just sitting there from, for more than 45 minutes trying images and I saw this, this birds flying and the sun was on the opposite direction. I was getting these rim lights and all those things and that's how I got that image. Yeah, it's on the opposite side. The sun is on the opposite side. Yeah. Right. Uh, there, there were questions again on uh, APS-C versus full frame versus mirrorless. The answer remains the same. Whatever it is, uh, I think uh, one of them uh, very aptly responded back uh, on the chat that the eye matters uh, a lot, what you see, and the camera is uh, then becomes secondary. So I think uh, that is more important. 
so uh, please rent it out please uh, do whatever lenses you want uh, but uh, first try it out and then only go first out i think there's a question from saurabh on what lens uh, is good for astrophotography Uh, so astrophotography is it Astro astrophotography what is the best lens to use um i think you need a a, a wide lens and uh, maybe yeah. I, I can answer that uh, i can answer that shankar so basically uh, for astrophotography you need a super wide uh, angle uh, a 1020 a 1424 nikon kind of stuff uh, or whatever whatever is the widest uh, uh, you know uh, range that you can get uh, and if you have a 2.8, nothing like it because you will get the capture the details very well. Uh, so it all depends. But uh, uh, something which is wide enough, like a 10 plus, uh, is definitely required. So, okay. Uh, can Jotsna is asking, can we get rental cameras? Of course, yes. Uh, Bangalore, Pune, Chennai, Hyderabad, a lot of uh, these major metro cities. Uh, there are lots of them. Uh, we don't have a, a list of things here right now, but people who are in Bangalore, I can definitely comment that uh, there are a lot of them. Please uh, Google them out. Uh, Told is one company that does rent it out and there are a lot of them. Uh, please reach out to them. We don't uh, at Honeycomb rent out lenses. Uh, but uh, yeah, there are a lot of them. You can get in touch with us uh, if you want some more help. Uh, There's Ramya who is asking, uh, I have a Canon 600D budding photographer. Uh, I'm focusing somewhere else, uh, but want to learn how to take best shots. I think this is answered already, Ramya. Uh, it all depends on... Uh, the learning. So if you need more assistance, I would uh, recommend that you join some professional workshops or uh, uh, get a mentor to help you uh, because that's that's an art and that's a very important art. Uh, Shankar, I think you agree. You can also join TGIS, uh, you know, Mithun, you can uh, sure. ask people to join TGIS uh, group as well. And we inform you of any workshops that are coming by. So absolutely. Those so, so you're trying to uh, join TGIS, you can get in touch with Mithun and uh, he will help you to yeah. uh, connect with TGIS. So for anything and everything, please reach out to me, uh, uh, PM me on to whatever. I already put my Facebook and Instagram handles, so you can reach out and then I can guide you where to reach. So don't worry about it, Ramya. We can definitely assist you. Um, I know that there were a lot of questions on the Jagachitra contest. We don't have too much of time, but uh, in the interest of... Uh, uh, the questions to be answered, uh, uh, Sanisha from the team had already shared into the chat, uh, you know, the link to register uh, the email address of the TJS Bangalore group uh, to reach out. So please reach out there. Uh, we'll definitely assist you. Uh, you'll have to do it quick because the registration ends, like Shankar said, on Monday, end of day. Uh, but uh, you can always reach out to us. Uh, you know, we can help you uh, because it's a uh, the pictures that you select, what you, you you might have a lot of questions. We can uh, definitely answer via that. Uh, but definitely do participate, folks, because that will help you, uh, you know, in displaying your uh, this thing and for the cost. Um, I think there was a, another question from Sajib on uh, what lens typically Shankar do you use for shooting birds and wildlife? Any specific uh, choice? I use a very simple 150 600 mm uh, Tamron lens. But, um, you know, sometimes I do higher, uh, you know, 500 mm lenses or 600 uh, mm lenses. Right. I think there were a lot of questions on career opportunities, Shankar. Uh, I think you have evoked a lot of interest in people. So are there any career opportunities uh, for the youngsters, especially? Uh, one minute. I was just uh, trying to find that. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, I'll just put this here so that... Uh, Okay, that let this be there on the on the screen here. Yeah, so career opportunities. Uh, so right now, if I were to say there are uh, there there is money, uh, if you're looking at money, making money. I am not the right person because I don't make much money <laughs> on my photography. Uh, there is uh, wedding photography. There is uh, advertising uh, photography, uh, product photography, uh, and there's a lot of money in videos. Uh, so video is really gaining uh, speed. So those of you who want to there's some noise okay so uh, uh, if you're if you're looking at uh, uh, making money through photography these are fashion um, uh, agency work uh, product photography uh, weddings uh, even photography these are all things where there is there is money uh, so if you want to do that you can you can uh, you know intern with some uh, of the studios and, and photographers and see if you can be an apprentice with them and then 
slowly learn the ropes and then uh, get get to do your own stuff as you go along. Right. So I think there was a question, um, and in fact, multiple questions from Arun. Are uh, so there were six questions, but uh, I think uh, more of them, most of them were answered. But there's one specific question, Shankar, on uh, what impact uh, can a black and white picture create? Okay, so yeah, why why would we use black and white? You know, and I I, I remember that I used this uh, for the NGO uh, when we were taking pictures. Um, uh, black and white uh, is having this very uh, emotional, evocative uh, quality. And when you are trying to depict, especially uh, more like a documentary style photography, um, the and especially where people are involved, I would I would uh, use the black and white option, and it it works out so well. Uh, but you know, it's it's very important to know when uh, black and white is to be used or when uh, color is to be used, because if 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 color is something is as part of the story then I don't think I would want to use, uh, you know, black and white there it's, it's, if color is something that's adding value. But if if I want to focus on emotions, then I, I don't want the colors to distract. Uh, then I would I would use the black and white option there. I remember doing uh, some work for MSSI where we uh, did a uh, exhibition which uh, reflected the invisible symptoms of multiple sclerosis. And I use black and white, and they are such powerful images that people, when they looked at those images, they felt, you know, they they felt, you know, they, they told me that it felt so uncomfortable. And they said, you know, I, I could actually feel what an MS person is feeling with those invisible symptoms. So yeah, that's the that's the power of those photographs and that's the power of those black and white images. Absolutely. Uh, the, the... Uh, I, I would want to answer a few questions uh, that were asked on joining TGIS that I'm outside Bangalore, doesn't matter uh, wherever you are, even if you're outside India, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, we do, of course, you know, we would love to be uh, meeting you in person, but then it doesn't matter the, uh, you know, for these exhibitions and everything. In fact, it is a good opportunity for you to travel to Bangalore and meet all of us. Uh, so, but if you are from Calcutta or you're from outside India, don't worry. Uh, please get in touch with us. Uh, please join us uh, and have uh, the joy of all of it. Uh, Sajeev, this is for you. Um, I will just take last three questions, Shankar, because it's already uh, over, uh, a lot over time. Uh, thank you very much. I think more than 50, 60 people I still see have booked on. So that uh, tells so I know how much uh, beneficial this uh, session is. Uh, and apologies in case if we are not picked up your questions, like I said, I will definitely uh, will get in touch uh, with you back uh, to answer. Uh, but there's, there was a question on visual narration from Pranji. He wanted to know what is the role of uh, visual narration in the photography and why is it important? Uh, so uh, I I used to uh, take those beautiful images. Uh, that's what I was focusing on for almost uh, the first 10 years of my work is my my job is to go and you know, capture these, uh, these one beautiful image or this one, uh, you know, just that one image that would really tell the entire story. But uh, I was... Uh, uh, went to a workshop by a gentleman by name Tefik El Sawi, uh, who is a travel photographer, and he introduced me to this concept of documentary travel photography, and uh, it was an eye opener for me, because uh, how do you tell a story, let's say, with twenty images? And I think uh, Manish and I have done a, a webinar uh, before. I think it was on Instagram. I think so. It, I think it was there Instagram on, Live. Yes. Yeah, Instagram Live, and we we talked about it. And uh, it was a completely new thing that how do I tell a story with say 20 images? What will those 20 images be? So I was, my whole thought process started, uh, you know, changing with this, this concept where I was only looking at one well-composed, beautiful, um, you know, excellent image. And I missed out on so many different opportunities to really capture the final details of the moment of the event. And uh, I, I think uh, I think that's where I, I, I moved on to that. Uh, that when I go now, let's say I, I, you know when you go to Paris, you know I just don't want to capture Eiffel Tower and come back and say I have captured Paris. There's a lot more to Paris than just the Eiffel Tower. Or you don't want to go to Rome and go to the Colosseum and say, look, I've captured Rome in uh, one image and captured the Colosseum and come back. There's so much to do in Rome. So if you want to go to Mysore, it's just not the palace. There's so many things in Mysore. Just go on to the, uh, on to the market 
and go on to the various shopping streets and the eateries and these restaurants. There's so much one can capture. So I think the the narrative, I think the storytelling uh, aspect uh, with one, one image is, is fine. But to be able to tell a story with multiple images and weave the story together, I think that's an art. And I think that's this, this where I have moved on to. Great. Uh, last two questions, uh, Shankar, uh, uh, I will take. Uh, one is on the creative side of the photography that you mentioned. So what is uh, really required when you say creative photography? And how to do it? This from so, so, yeah, so there's, you know, there is, there are certain things, for example, if you go to the, uh, go to the Taj Mahal, right? And, and, you know, everybody goes to the Taj Mahal, they go right in the center, there's this bench, there's this, uh, you know, uh, leading lines and this beautiful, uh, you know, fountain that is there in the center. And you have those symmetrical, you know, pillars and the Taj Mahal. Yeah, you got this image, fine. So everybody shot this image, all right? It's okay. So what is, what is your next what is your, your next, next angle? Where are you going to shoot the Taj from? What, are you, what is going to happen? So, so when, you, when you, you want to be the same old, same old, what everybody's done, then it's not going to help you because everybody, a million, million, a zillion uh, people, I don't know, a billion people must have visited, I don't know, Taj Mahal and they've shot Taj Mahal from all angles. But if you just look at Raghurai and you, he's made a book from Taj Mahal and he took, I think, around three to four years to shoot the Taj Mahal. If you look at it and so wondering, hey, where did this guy shoot this uh, Taj from? Where did this image come from? Where, where did he shoot this Taj from? And that's the thing about, you know, what is the alternative, you know, that you can come up with uh, to, to tell the story, you know, because everybody has been there to the same place. Now, what are you, what is the next best angle that you can come up with? So the, the lighting, the angle, the, um, uh, the composition, uh, the, the perspective, I think I think there is so much to uh, you know to 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 the image at the end of the day, and that's where you bring in your creativity. You don't want to be the same old, same old. What's the next next best picture you can take? And then that it means that you have to think, like I said, you have to get your creative thinking hat on. So you want to go to Humpy, right? Everybody is shot Humpy now a billion times from different angles. No stone has been left uncovered in Humpy. Now you want to go to Humpy now. What are, you, what are you going to do there? How are you going to take the picture? What is going to do? Uh, well, what are you going to show in Humpy, which has not been shown before? Right. right. Um, I think uh, last two questions. I, I've been saying that last two questions, but I think <laughs> really last two questions. Uh, I think most of them we have answered uh, uh, or we have asked to get in touch with us. Uh, one question on the same question that uh, follow-up question on the black and white. Uh, so what is your picking point for Selecting a black and white versus color. Yeah, we've answered that already. So maybe take another one. And the last one, uh, which is, uh, which form of learning has been found as most effective, efficient way of learning photography, according to you? With your, I think that's uh, an important question. I think, see, if you're talking about fundamentals and basics, I think you should go to a proper workshop and don't 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 depend on YouTube for learning fundamentals and basics. But when you're talking about, let us say, you're adding on, you know, what do you say? Uh, a plugin, let us say you want to learn, uh, let's say again, you want to learn Photoshop or Lightroom. You attend a basic workshop on Photoshop and Lightroom. I, I, I would urge you to do that. But let's say you want to, let's say, see a particular component on, on how to improve, let's say, uh, do skin smoothing in uh, Photoshop or Lightroom. Uh, that is available on YouTube. There are some 10 different uh, you know, uh, ways you could do that. Or how do you how do you remove background? So you want to learn that. So yeah, you could you could probably use uh, Photoshop, uh, YouTube for that. So I think I think when I, I I would say that learning the fundamentals and basic, please do attend a, a proper uh, learn from a proper person from a proper workshop. I would like you to. Do. Then of course, uh, for, just to add on, keep adding on to that. YouTube is a great great resource. But if you want to learn something uh, a different style and a different way of looking at it. Uh, whenever you see these these uh, photography festivals in Hyderabad, they regularly have these photography festivals. And I, I remember I met uh, this gentleman, Sandro, and he was doing portrait photography. Such a revealing uh, thing that, uh, you know, uh, to, to learn uh, portrait photography from Sandro, you know, the way he did lighting, how, how simple, you know, we, we don't, he was just using a single light to create some amazing images and the angles which he was shooting, the, the photographs he was showing. It, it was it was amazing to see him work uh, those images. 
So I think uh, uh, observing photo, uh, you know, famous photographers, uh, attending workshops of uh, photographers will be a great, uh, a great learning experience. All right. Right. I think uh, not just Sandro. I remember Nick Wood as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were there. You were there with yeah, yeah. Nick Wood as well. I mean, I I can never forget his Vietnam War images. So right. it absolutely. was very very colorful. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay, uh, Suri. I know that you've been uh, requesting a question uh, multiple times in the chat on the criteria for portrait photography. Don't worry about it. Shankar already mentioned. Please join a workshop. Get in touch with us. Join DGIS. So you know there'll be workshops that will be there. Uh, please join and uh, you will get all that. So don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we're not ignoring your question. We definitely want to, but then in the interest of time, uh, it's a big, large topic. Uh, so the, uh, oh, please do that. So I think thank you very much, uh, Shankar. Thanks uh, so much uh, for your time. Uh, uh, more than 60 people still hanging on. Uh, I think uh, that is a testimony for uh, the session that has gone very well. Uh, a lot of informative tips that we shared. Uh, there are a lot of thanks that are coming in. Uh, appreciations uh, for the session with Anikom. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nofil, Srikumar, Vinay, Sanisha, uh, Georgie, uh, Kartika, all, all the back-end team for assisting with this uh, successful webinar. This recording will be provided. So somebody had asked, I had missed 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Don't worry about it. The entire recording will be there. It is already there on the Anikom YouTube channel as well for you to go through. It will be sent to you via email, uh, just uh, it will come on Monday, uh, because tomorrow being Sunday, uh, but it will be sent along with the Jagat Chitra, the exhibition details. Uh, the feedback link has already been posted. Uh, please don't forget to just click on the link bookmark. Please uh, give the feedback. It's very important for us to know uh, for our future uh, webinars. One last question that I want to ask, uh, if you guys can just uh, post into the chat, what are the topics of webinar that would you want to you know hear uh, from from us so please do you know do use that opportunity to put across or you can put it in the feedback form as well uh, what is it that you want to hear from us uh, like i mentioned please do uh, use the promo code that shri kumar had shared 15 percent is not a small amount uh, to print you will be pleasantly surprised and i can tell you like shankar mentioned uh, the pushkar picture uh, you will be uh, either you'll be happy uh, printing and uh, putting it onto your wall into your own homes or somebody buying it from you and putting into their homes. I think uh, either ways, uh, it's a win-win situation for all. Uh, and do participate in our exhibition. We would love to see your pictures. We would love to see you uh, feeling the amount of pride uh, to display your pictures, to show your friends, use social media to tag us uh, and show us the love. Thank you very much, uh, Shankar. Thanks, uh, Anikom team. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, Sri. Thank you, Vikram. Take care. Bye-bye.